Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We're going to be covering what you guys have asked for, my tier list for all the epic artifacts that you should be using and be avoiding. So stay tuned for the entire tier list. Good morning everyone. We are going to be going over the artifacts today. As you can tell it's pretty early. I'm still waking up a bit groggy but it is what it is. So if you've been waiting for this list it is out today as you can imagine and I've got another special later on with another hero guide being released today which will finally finish off this whole season one roster, meaning you're one step closer to that syndrome. So smash a like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos by me, Mr. Sneaky, for Call of Dragons. So let's go into the, the video, right? We're gonna go and talk about the artifacts. We've got a few more, but they're a little bit hidden, which is the heart piercer, uh, the mask, and green finger sickle. But we're gonna go over all the epic artifacts plus the blue artifacts. We're just ignoring the green ones because as you can imagine, the green ones aren't really worth your time. You just normally use those on the gathering commanders only. Same with the gems artifacts, which I've avoided here, because that is, again, specifically only for gatherers. So everything else is there of every other rarity. So we're going to go over, and we're going to go over as it showcases here. I'm going to give you guys some good ones, some medium ones, and we're going to try and spread it out as we go through. So... The starter one, what we're going to go straight away, is honestly Bombflinger. And Bombflinger is always, it's an S tier for me, it's an always used artifact for free to play. And the reason why this is so powerful is because of the artifact damage, right? So if we go into the game, we will be able to see the reason why. And that is up because of the amount of damage as well as the stats this gives. This is an amazing weapon for marksmen, especially for PvE content. And this is what I used in the Rota Glory series for my marksmen to hit those top five rankings very often and get into even the top tens against other players. The reason is when you look at this, this is a 2400 damage factor to a single target. And this is the most single target damage you can have on a artifact for the epic tier and this is really good because it is only viable for the darklings dark creatures and behemoth so you're going to be using this through loads of different events and the cool thing is what it doesn't highlight certain legions in the dark dragon trials for example also get hit by bombs away so you're able to use this in multiple events which also gives it such a good rating so the versatility to for a free to play player who's using archers bombs away is going to be one of those artifacts you must have and you're going to be using this so often and leveling it up so you can honestly punch through and get really high dps and we look at the artifact as well it gives you maximum attack obviously we're going all the way up to a bonus of 18 percent legion attack giving you as well at five stars if you get that five star rating in stars or ignited the damage taker reduction by five percent that's not really needed i'd only keep this at four stars guys so don't waste your stars I'm trying to get this to five so that is the first one bomb flinger so if we go back into the tier list now what we're going to be able to do is now go over some others. So for the same reasonings, we're going to go over and put the um, book in S tier. This book is called the Advanced Incantation. You can get this again for mages. And if you start out, which we kind of forgot to mention with the Bomb Flinger, you get access to Bomb Flinger if you just start out as Spring Warden. So it's a really powerful thing to start out with. And the advanced incantation is the exact same. And this is one you're going to use, again, for mages while you're looking for your main artifacts. And the reason why this is such a good one is the exact same reasonings as the one we just stated for Bonflinger. This is a excellent, and I mean a excellent, guys, um, artifact for you. It allows you to basically gain a massive, and this is the biggest out of all artifacts for out of every category obviously the bomb fling is the most damage you can have on a archer artifact but the advanced incantation skill does 2800 damage to the behemoth so again this is the exact same thing 
for the mages that that bomb flinger is. So I honestly do advise using this. And at level five, as you can imagine, this is a 2800 nuke. And if you're wondering, is this going to be worth using? If we do compare it just for argument's sake to a Phoenix Eye, obviously Phoenix Eye is so much better in PvP because you're hitting at 2,000 nuke on four targets, right? But in a raid, 2,000 damage or 2,500 damage isn't worth it because it's only one target now, right? So you need a level three burst strike to have over 3,000 damage to now do the exact same, or should I say 200 more damage than your maxed out epic. So really good reasoning why that book is a really good filler for you. So honestly, you should always use this for you guys when you're debating for just something to use in the meantime while you're looking for that main legendary artifact. So now we've got the Amulet of Glory. What I'm gonna just put this in is in the B area. It's not a great artifact, I'm not gonna lie guys. It's okay, it's just there. If you've got it, it might be nice just to put on at the very start if you don't and have a cavalry artifact and it'll just help you kill it, kill the dark pins and dark creatures. It's okay, it's nothing too crazy. So we've got the next one which is Archer's Manual. Archer's Manual is a very interesting one. I'm going to put it in the C category and that doesn't mean it's bad. I'm going to actually put it in where it says specifics because Archer's Manual is is a very specific artifact and it could be a very powerful artifact and it's not had a lot of love and tender care, should we say, compared to the other artifacts. So if we go and just showcase this artifact for you guys, you're going to be wondering why am I putting it in the specific category and it's because when we look at it, it is a really powerful ability, Ooh, if we didn't misclick, it's a really powerful ability because it gives your legion 25% extra physical attack for 20 seconds. That's absolutely nutty guys. And it gives you unit defense. So it gives you two of the best stats that you kind of want on your marksman unit, but it's such a you know, it doesn't do anything else, right? No one's really tested yet if the 25% specific buff is worth having over some of these other artifacts. So that's why at the moment, I'm gonna leave it in the C tier because I think it could be potentially good, but it's too specific in its usage. So now we're gonna go and grab the cloak. This cloak of stealth is a menace. This is always an S tier artifact you have to be using this cloak when we go and showcase it onto the uh, streamer, switch it back over. The cloak of stealth, the cloak of stealth, definitely an S tier artifact. And the reason why, as you guys know, without having to switch back to that screen, it is the best free to play artifact to use in PVP without worry. Why? Because you can always go invisible with your cavalry, you can go and sneak behind enemy lines, and you can farm kill. People might hate it, yes, some people might hate me for saying this, but for a free to play player, farm killing is a very effective way of gaining merits. And it's gonna allow you guys to gain those merits, buy the resources and speed ups you need to progress your account, which is very, very important. So that's why the cloak of stealth is so good. And anyone, even T5 players can sometimes still use this just to cause problems. Even though they've got T5, they can sneak behind enemy lines, appear and just cause mayhem right so really good artifact really do recommend using it right so now we've got veteran's diary veteran's diary is actually bad i'm not gonna say anything it is just bad it used to be a really cool effect that the fact that it gives you a bunch of normal attack damage which could be potentially very very broken with syndrome right but it doesn't do much out else of that. And that's the problem. If it did something else or if it gave you some relevant stats, you might actually be caring about it, but I, I wouldn't use this. It's just a bad artifact. You might have it just at the start, shall we say, you know, just in case you get a B or A artifact, then you'll move instantly into that. But at the start, um, it's okay, but you're gonna move out of this really, really fast, this Veterans Diary. Then you've got the Codex, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna put the Codex in D tier. I think this thing is a dog. And the reason why this thing is dog 
is you don't really use it in uh, PBE. You don't really, and you can't use it in PVP, shall we say as well, because it's a PVE specific artifact. Even though these two appear a PVE artifacts, they're so good and powerful, and the fact they can use in so many events, and it gets you pushed through. The shield doesn't do anything. The shield just kind of prolongs the envelope. It doesn't cheese your your marches through the content, right? If you're T4 fighting T5 units, for example. So it's just not good. And even in the PvP realm, this just doesn't do anything. It's just not worth your time. So wouldn't really use it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste any XP on it. Maybe once you've got everything maxed out, you might start maxing this out just so all your artifacts are maxed. That's, that's how we're going to label D tier. Just don't waste your time. So, Blade of Reproach. Blade of Reproach, really cool artifact. It's going to be in a B tier too. I do like this. I actually prefer this is in a higher position compared to that Amulet of Glory. Why? It's a nice bit of damage nuke. It's a, it gives you a little bit of range too before you go into battle, which isn't too bad. So, it's really good for PvE clearing, especially when you're waiting to get an A or S tier artifact for the cavalry unit. So... Definitely would recommend using this as a general start purpose. It's a really good filler until later on. I don't think I've got the artifact in, so we're going to have to add it in later on, the, the next one. But let's just keep moving on, which is the Berserker Axe. So the Berserker Axe is actually a blue artifact, if I remember. And the cool thing with the Berserker Axe is actually a really good artifact. <laughs> Even for free-to-play players, you're going to realise it's going to allow you to basically nuke a load of single target nukes really, really fast. And the fact is that this single target nuke does a bunch of damage. It's actually way better than the Ambient Glory as well. Um, it allows you to push through content and you'd be surprised on how much content this will actually push you through in the early game, especially when you're looking for the A and S tier artifact. So definitely really would use it. General start, really good. So definitely B tier artifact in my eyes. So now we've got the movement speed buff. And the movement speed buff, I'm gonna put in the C tier. And the reason why it's C tier isn't because it's bad. Imagine it's because it's so it's specific. And the specific thing about this is, and it's the top of the C tier, it's, it's gonna be the gatekeeper of it. Cause it's a good artifact. It grants you march speed, right? And granting march speed might not sound crazy, but when you're doing certain range, you might actually take this if you don't have the tailwind. You also always have this equipped to your cavalry tier two unit that you sent out for runes so you can get into places really fast. Again, if you're trying to get somewhere really, really quickly just to get to chests, for example, this is a great artifact for it. So honestly, it's the best max speed item that's not the legendary one, right? So I really do like this artifact for that. So let's go and just quick break. Let's go into showcasing some artifacts on the game. Um, so we can go over what we've shown so far on screen and just justify some of that outcome. So when we go into some of these artifacts here, what we were just talking about here, when we look at that Berserker's Axe right down here, all the way down here, Bone Cleaver, it's a really powerful thing, 800 damage, and when you're fighting against a unit above 50, percent which you always are it's 1200 damage so you can see and this is scaling right gives you a bunch of defense and unit attack which is really nice bit of overall stats so this is why it's a really really good artifact if we go over to the codex which we were talking about has no rage cost gives you guys some shield 25 2400 shield 15 seconds but that's it it doesn't do anything else and this is only for darkness dark creatures behemoths so that's why it's just a trash artifact Amulet of Glory can buff nearby enemy legions, which is really cool, giving them basically damage taken from Dark and Dark Creatures minus 24%. It's okay, this is why we're saying it isn't the greatest, but for a general start artifact, you're not going to be too mad about it, right? So then we have the uh, March Speed. Where's the March Speed, boys? Oop, misclick. Do apologize, everyone. So when we go to the Boots of Swiftness, we have, again, 30% March Speed here, so when you trigger it, which is nuts. 
But it's the fact that the natural one, so even if you don't star this up, which I made a mistake on, you don't need to star this thing up. Starring up gives you Legion HP, which is okay, but it's not what you use it for. The fact that it gives you so much mark speed, you can actually just, as you can imagine, just gain mark speed by just increasing this artifact so high. So it allows you to get to places really, really quick. So I do recommend using it, right? Let's go back to the main screen. We just need to uh, do some quick editing. And here we are. So we're gonna go over the rest of them. As you can see, we added Centaur's bow. So that was the little problem we missed out. So I hope you guys didn't realize that we might have. So here we go. We've got the next one up and you can see we've basically got it in order so far and it's been a nice little mixture of everything so far. So the Crown of Berserker, honestly, I think it's just a bad artifact. I've never used it. I don't recommend using it either. You've got these other three artifacts here which basically do better things for your march and the other ones above again are going to be really good. It's too... Just it's just bad. Actually, do you know what? We're gonna drop it down to don't waste your time. I don't think you should waste your time on it. It's just not anything you worth using. So then we come to the um, um, Ever Ice, and a Ever Ice is actually an amazing flex. And do you know why it's an A tier? It's because it's the first thing you guys get access to if you're a mage player. That is actually a PvP weapon. And the reason why this is a really good PvP weapon isn't because of always you know, damage, 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 if we go into the artifact itself, the thing with the artifact, the ever is, it gives you some utility as well as damage, which is really, really cool. So if we go into the old stream Labaruni, we can see here the ever ice artifact now. So the ever have Ever Ice Artifact doesn't have an insane skill damage factor as you can see even when this is maxed out it's going to be 600 damage so it's nothing crazy this is basically the same amount of damage as Wild Deer's skill um, if you want to call it that maybe a little bit less but it's the fact that this gives you as well Frozen so this reduces their march speed by 10% so if you really wanted to if you have for some reason like your other artifacts are on different marches and you need a alternative and this is why it's a really good one as well early game you've got this artifact here that's going to do a bunch of damage it gives you a nice amount of legion hp which is really good it also gives you magic unit defense which is really good so it gives your magic units the ability to be tanking out you can also use this on other units right if you wanted to have a cavalry unit having a ranged little nuke when they escape you can do that as well but just remember this does have a rage cost of 1600 which is quite high that's why it's tend to be used by majors because they can charge this up really easily because they don't really get targeted that often but when they do they go off right so honestly really underappreciated artifact and it is a rare so i would recommend using this it's a really good amazing flex artifact while you're waiting for some of the other artifacts in this list to come up so definitely would recommend using ever ice i hope you understand why now then you got freezing ring and freezing ring is in the c tier we're going to put it actually quite um second in the in the leadership and the reason why we're putting it second is because it's a really good artifact for raiding this actual artifact gives you the ability to basically bypass certain raid mechanics as you know so if you're playing like the necro giant raid you're able to if you don't like the wall where it spews out the, the lasers that shoot you know crossed up from left to right you can freeze ring this and just just skip the whole phase you can do this um, at least twice i know within the raid depending on how long the raid lasts for your alliance obviously so it is a good artifact for that specific reason apart from that you don't really see it get used at the moment maybe in the future people might actually really appreciate the ice block mechanic if they're getting really really heavily targeted we'll soon see but definitely an okay specific Artifact, we know it's use, it's got its use, and people still use its use like that today, especially if you're a low power player. So definitely in the C tier for me. So now let's go to Giant's Bone. So Giant's Bone is a good general start weapon. It's better than the other two here. And the reason why it's actually better than the um, thing you should be just say is a really good general starter 
um, artifact to infantry. And the reason why it is a PvE only artifact, so it doesn't do any damage in PvP. So that's why it wouldn't. It would be higher if it did some sort of PvP damage or if it's PvE skills really, really powerful, but it's not that insane, right? It only knocks them up for a little while. It's a percentage chance that you knock them up to, which a lot of people forget about. Um, it does a nice AOE cone damage, which is good. So it's okay in the early general starting, but you're gonna, again, realize you're gonna find other artifacts that's gonna just be better for you, and you're gonna use more often than this for infantry. So now we're going to come to an all-star, and a lot of people might, might raise their eyebrows, but if, if you've been sleeping under a rock, Green Finger Sickle, yeah, definitely a S-tier artifact. And I'm actually going to put it at the top. And the reason why I'm putting it at the top here for now is because of the ability to farm a bit. This sounds crazy. Farming is so powerful in this game, and being able to farm more obviously allows you to progress your account quicker. But with Greenfinger Sickle, which is really cool, is when you have this thing maxed out and you can get this through the dark chests, remember, you're going to be able to send out your gatherer to the alliance pit and trigger this straight away. So no matter where you are in that alliance pit, you know you're going to hit a massive amount of one to, you know, five, six million, depending on what resource there's inside, easily for your account. So a really good artifact. It allows you to as well, if you're just wondering what other good use it has. Even in PvP, it sounds crazy, but in PvP, Green Finger Sickle can also be used to clean up tiles. You've got to remember, if there's a tile on territory and you need to get players in in a nice tight area and there's a tile blocking it, you can send it all, one person can send their march, green finger sickle, pull it out, the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and it's cleared within three or four triggers of this artifact. So you can also benefit your alliance and help do some nice alliance planning with this artifact. So honestly, it's really good. Um, a lot of people might underappreciate this, but it is definitely S tier. If you think it's not S tier, and you're sleeping under a rock. So now we'll go to the harlequin's mask and if, if again harlequin's mask is an a tier artifact why this is going to be the artifact that basically you move up from you're going to basically use these um general acts for the start of the game and you're going to use this to basically level up your heroes on all the patrols because it's really good at killing patrols but you're always going to be leveling and prioritizing starring up and maxing out this harlequin's mask it's a rare item we know just like the ever ice but it's honestly better than ever ice it's probably the best um, blue artifact in the game and the reason is for raids it's the best thing for raids you need this in a raid if you don't have this on your infantry tank it basically means you're allowing the behemoth to do whatever it wants and being able to taunt that behemoth in place as you guys know is very important for dps it allows all the backline archers and majors to free hit without having to worry about so many more mechanics than just basically positioning for their account so basically the all-star in a raid is the infantry players that are able to use this artifact very very effectively and create really good time windows so now we're on with the final stretch honestly we've only got eight artifacts so far left to go so if you've enjoyed the video so far remember to smash like comment and subscribe to the channel but the next artifact i'm going to go over is heart piercer and heart piercer is definitely an s tier artifact it's going to be up there we're going to try and move these around so they're in a really good order for you so you're going to kind of understand the power on it so the reason why Heart Pit is an S tier artifact for Epics is pretty reasonable. You've got a nice brunt of damage, which you always want on your archers. It gives you a great effect, as you can imagine. If we just jump over to the game, we can also showcase this. So we're not just talking out loud, you know, bum. If we go down, oh, if the game wants to work today, I don't know what's going on on the PC client. But as you can see here, a bunch of marksman unit attack, which is amazing. You always want unit attack on your marksman. It means your normal hits are hitting even harder than they already are. And your skill damage. Your skill damage is all based on physical attack. So boosting it is amazing. As you can see, at level 5, you get a beautiful 2k nuke. And that's why, obviously, Bomb Flinger does more damage than this. And this is why this has a alternate use, though, because you can use this if it is a level 5 artifact and obviously the bomb fling is not 
You're going to be able to use this for raiding. It does a nice amount of damage. You're able to use this in PvP, which is what's more important, right? Because you can now have a artifact in S tier that's always going to be able to be flexible picks. And this going to allow you to use it in two different scenarios. So the Heart Pierce are good for raiding. It does a nice amount of damage. But in PvP, you get that massive physical defense break of 15%. And if you get that defense break on someone like your Guan Wing Craig combo, and the Craig fires off and that bleed is on when that 15% defense breaks on, you're going to see their health start to melt. So, very good artifact. Definitely recommend. Honestly, one of the best artifacts in the artifact category for what it is. Hopefully, it might get a buff in the future, but I don't see any artifacts in the epics getting buffed. It's just what they are for now. Maybe we'll get some more in the future. Who knows? But I think it's just going to be the legendary tiers from now. So let's go back and see the rest of the tier list because we've got almost the last remaining to go. The last remaining thing to go is Homecoming Blossom. And you know what? Homecoming Blossom, I'm just going to put in C tier. It's not... It's not the worst artifact. Do you know why this is good? Same exact reason as the March Speed one. But the only difference is, this is really only good if you're trying to go somewhere really, really far and you're like rallying a pass, for example, and you're like 500 kilometers away and you're just sending a 200k unit to refill that rally once on the pass, then you'd use the Homecoming Boss in then that situation to come home. So you're not walking at 500 kilometers. Same reason if you're sending it out for a rune, you can put this on your rune march and then once they've collected the rune, press the artifact, it's gonna blink you hope. Really good artifact. Some people might say you can use this to gather, but I, I just don't. I'd rather use actually the gathering specific artifacts that give you the gathering speed or load capacity. They're just better for you. March speed anyway, you get through with talents and you're pretty fast with the transport units. So uh, yeah, it's okay, it's C tier, nothing too crazy. So now we're on the last and final cavalry artifact that we've been waiting on, and it is a A tier. We're gonna put it in the top of A tier at the moment. And the reason why is it's the first artifact that you guys get as an upgrade, and it is the first honest major upgrade that you can use in PvP, which is really cool, and it's Centaur's Bow. Centaur's Bow is gonna allow you AoE damage on a cavalry you know, March, which is kind of cool. So if you look, you get a nice amount of defense, so your cavalry are not going to be scared at tanking. And then obviously when you charge in, you get that unyielding rush, you're able to do that massive amount of nuke. And if they're, you know, surrounded by other units, this is a really good artifact to do AoE, right? So if you've got an Emery's Alistair combo, or if you're running Alistair Primary with a backsheet, because your backsheet might be only like 3111 or 4111, same with your Emery. So you're maining that 5511 Alistair, for example, main. This is a really good artifact for him because he gives him a bunch more stats to be defensive with. He gets to go in, like I say, he throws off his AoE, you got the Emery's or the Bakshi in the map doing a big bunch of damage. Then you can follow up with another 1500 damage, right? So really good artifact, honestly. It's the one you move up to, and this is what you're gonna be using a lot of the time until you get a legendary artifact. So you're gonna be basically switch between this and the cloak. And the reason why I think this is an A tier artifact in the cloaks is, is an S tier artifact is honestly just how broken the cloak is. Because when we when you look at the cloak, it gives you a bunch of attack, which is always what you want. But you get 1800 second stealth. And that is so long. Just think 60 seconds is one minute. So just, just 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 think how many that how many minutes this is already going. This is ten minutes or it's, it's nearly an hour or 40, 50 minutes worth of time. It's just ridiculous, right? So you can take you can get as far as you need to go, hit the invisible, then go where you want to really go, and obviously kill all the farmer units. So super powerful artifacts. And honestly, we might see it get used in the future in Roots of War, right? Imagine Roots of War with all the artifacts being on. You're all invisible. The cavalry just appear out of nowhere and just basically flank you from the, uh, from a um, left or right position. Would be really cool to see. So definitely enjoy that. So let's go back to the TA. This is how we're looking at now. We've got the last five and we've got two, as you can imagine, the magic bomb. And the magic bomb is S tier. And it is honestly now the best artifact. If you want, let's just put it at the top. It is the best epic artifact 
you can have. Now, the reason why is it's just insanely user friendly, should we say? For a mage player, it is a direct upgrade from Everice, which is really good. It allows you to have a AoE source. So when you're using Waldir and Valen, you're allowed to use this now as well to give you that punch because it gives you that magic unit attack. As well, you can place this on like cavalry units. The enemy cavalry units normally run into the um, enemy players and you always get generally a really good value on this artifact. It's a very popular artifact. You see it even being used by the T5 players. You know, they might still run free mage marches and run something like Phoenix Eye, Infernal Flame, Magic Bomb. It, it's, it's just so powerful for the AoE ability because you want AoE in the game and it is the best AoE you can have so far out of all the epic artifacts. So now we're going to go on to the next one, which is the Potion of Vigor. And the reason, this is going to probably raise a lot of eyebrows, I know, but I'm going to put the Potion of Vigor at the bottom of A tier. And this is one which I know even my, I'm scratching my head, what I, and I'm crazy for saying this, but the Potion of Vigor, the longer you play this game, the re you realise how powerful and good this artifact is because in pvp as you guys know it's all about building and destroying flags how fast can you build the flags and get to the center and if you can get to the center you can basically teleport there and refresh marches sooner than your opponent Ooh, everyone knows that right so what portion of vigor does is grant you basically double the amount of engineering you have for a massive amount of time again. And this is super powerful because as a lot of the top tier alliances know or might preach to their players, during certain stages they ask you to level up your Ordo and Craig. And by, for example, when you're in Afrian, you want a level 43 Ordo and Craig combo because this is gaining almost a 6 million, it sounds crazy, a 6 million infantry uh, engineering base and because you have that when you pop it this is going all the way up to 12 million engineering score and this can go even higher depending on your talents if you get all the way to 50 you can then obviously get even more points into the percentages so this is why i think it is an a tier artifact it is it's, i know it says amazing uh, and flex it is just an amazing artifact honestly for that pvp push it's very specific you might think and it could be in the c tier uh, for that reason but the longer you play this game the more you'll realize you always level up the portion of vigor you always level up Ordo, and you always level up craig because you need this trifecta build march basically to pump out so much building in the PvP realm that grants you the advantage on the open field. So I hope that makes sense to you guys why I've put it there. So it is a really good artifact and I've honestly slowly fallen in love with it. You see how much engineering you get, it's just ridiculous watching that time just drop. So really, really good. So we're on the last three, last three artifacts. I'm gonna put Rapid um, Crossbow, I think it's called in the B tier. It's a really good general start artifact. Um, just for the same exact reasons for your Berserker Cleaver um, or whatever this thing's called. I think it's the Berserker Cleave. And the uh, Rapid Fire Bow is the exact same thing. It's basically Guan wins skill one but on a rare artifact. It's really good for just killing patrols in the early game until you unlock one of these artifacts. As soon as you unlock one of these artifacts, you just replace your B and C tier artifacts with these guys basically really, really quickly. So it's really good, it's efficient, it gives you attack, it gives you the little bit of burst damage which you want, and it helps you kill those units. So now we're on Spirit Mango, and Spirit Mango I'm actually gonna put into um, the C tier. And the C tier, the, it's gonna be, it's, it, this is a close one, I'm actually gonna put it above the um, Freezer Ring. It's a specific artifact. It's not bad at all, guys. It's just a very specific artifact. You're not really going to be using it much. That's the one problem with it. And that's the, the only thing is this could be seen play in the future. Who knows? And the reason why is it removes the debuffs effect, right? 
And you can use this a lot as well in the Dire Bear Raid, because in the Dire Bear Raid, you're able to use the Spirit Bangle effect to do a massive AoE cleanse, and that cleanse actually removes the Purple Mist. So you can actually use this as your advantage in a raid, which is really good. It also has PvP use, because it gives you Legion HP, which is really, really powerful too. And like I said, it removes the debuffs on your march. So maybe in the future when you've got all these new, you know, let's say like commanders slash heroes coming out with skill ones that are doing, you know, physical attack reductions, maybe skill damage reductions, health reductions, all these AOE reductions that you could maybe potentially see come into this type style of game. This artifact would then in theory, climb the ladder because it has more use than in PvP if you're able to remove all these powerful debuff effects. So honestly, I think it's an okay artifact. It's just a specific use base, so at the moment, it's not bad at all. So I think that's where we're gonna lie. And then the final one, the very final one, is gonna be the Staff of Spring. And the Staff of Spring, is, honestly, it's an amazing flex artifact. I'm gonna put it um, in the middle of this category. And the reason why I put it in the middle of Amazing Flex is because it is a really good mage artifact. Sounds weird, but being able to self-heal yourself for about 2400 troop legions is quite nuts. As well, if you're trying to fight as a support hero, you can do this, right? You could try and run an Indus Pan March and run Staff of Healing here for a very dedicated support heal. And you can heal your T5 player of troops so your actual healing advantage now from what you're generating is translated into your alliance members um so it is really good you can use this in a bunch of different scenarios people use it in raids too maybe one or two players might bring this to heal the raid tank just to help him you know maintain his health while he waits for that healing stone potentially you can also, like I say, use in PvP for yourself, heal yourself a massive amount. And it, it is it's a good artifact and it gives you relevant stats, which is a really, really good um, finisher for the epic tiers. So I hope that is what you guys wanted. It's an epic tier list here of what I think you guys should basically want to invest into. A general now summary for you guys before we finish the video. Basically, D tiers, just don't waste your time. Don't use these. Just don't invest or basically put any points into them. In the C tier is the specific. So you've got specific scenarios like the boots and the spirit bang, which we just went over, and the freezing ring, which is really good in specific scenarios where you want to get to places or cheese a certain strategy. But then you've got some bad artifacts like the other three where we don't really know too much. That they're, they're okay in their own right, but they're not something you should be investing any of your dust into. Um, B is where we're going to say this is where you're good. You feel happy if you have any of these artifacts when you make a brand new account. If you've got any of these artifacts at level 5, you're going to be good to go to basically start out any season. And once you start that season and you can equip these artifacts, you'll realise you'll kill the content quicker, allowing you to get the dust and keys needed to unlock the other artifacts in the A and A s tier right so then once you've got your dust collected you'll be then basically choosing any of the artifacts in the a or s tier depending on the situation you want again this is all going to be hopefully i wouldn't say time stamped for each individual artifact so i'm going to time stamp this nicely so you can get a decent you know um feel throughout the video so i hope you've enjoyed it it's a nice long video i know you like the in-depth analysis and i enjoy doing it too as you can imagine so if you enjoyed it, smash the like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Mr. Sneak, an official Call of Dragons content creator, and we're here giving you Call of Dragons content every single day. So, with all that said, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. We're gonna do another tier list soon on um, the legendary artifacts, so you can have a go on those, so you know where we're gonna position all the legendaries and where I think they should be. And then we also, today, again, as a little teaser, we had the final season one hero guide coming out so i can't wait for that and i hope you guys are looking forward to it it means you're that one step closer to syndrome so with all that said smash the like comment and subscribe and until the next video stay safe stay sneaky and peace out everyone